so there are six stages of romantic relationships. And the first one is no interaction. So this is like before a romantic relationship, you know, it's called stage. And this is when we become aware of ourselves with the needs, goals, and qualities that affect what we look for in a romantic relationship. So this is like when you're single and everyone's like looking at inside because like it's thinking of what you want if you're going to be with someone. And also romantic relationships are categorized as either escalating, um, navigating, or deteriorating. And... Um, so then the next stage would be invitational communication. So that's when people verbally and non-verbally express interest in like maybe having this sort of relationship. So this is kind of more the first steps. Um, they take initiative with others and respond to invitations such as want to dance or want to go out and see a movie or something like that. So it kind of starts off the spark. Um, and then what's next is not really a step, but it's just uh, it's called a hypothesis, the matching hypothesis. And this predicts that people will seek relationships with others who closely match their own values, attitudes, social background, and physical attractiveness. Um, this is also good in general, not even as a hypothesis, but just to look for because it's easier to relate if you have similar uh, backgrounds. So you're knocking down the opposites attract. Uh, um. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it can still work, but for example, I was always told by my parents to date someone with my religion because that could be a big problem later on. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so then there's three more. Uh, the next one is called uh, explorational communication, and this is when people explore the possibilities for a relationship. So this, again, is like, um, I know what we teenagers call it talking. Uh, so this is when, <laughs> it's not really a stage, but it's when people are like getting to know each other better and maybe talking a lot more or even hanging out, trying to see if there's possibility that it could work out. Uh, then there's intensifying communication. Uh, so the relationship starts to gain depth. Um, there's a lot more interaction, like seeing each other every day or hanging out more um, and more intimacy. So personal subjects are brought up, um, a lot of more personal things because that's really how you get to know someone better. Uh, and then the next one is called revising communication. And that's when partners talk about the relationship strengths, problems, and potential for the future. And partners can consider if they want the relationship to last or not. So I think this kind of happens a lot during a relationship because depending on your situation, you have to always see like if there's distance, do you still want to stay together? Or if there's a problem at home? Or there's like lots of different factors. And this is kind of, to me, like it could almost be like waiting friendship, drawing it back to the stages of friendships because it could possibly, the relationship could possibly not be as good anymore, or that it could decide to stop if it won't work anymore. All right. Now we're going to talk about stages of relationships. Now, Hannah and Jesse have already talked about some of these, but we're going to talk about them more. Um, intimate bonding. That is a stage when partners decide to, decide to stay in a relationship for a long time. Navigating, Hannah talked about this too, uh, just a minute ago. Process of communicating to stay in a relationship even though changes happen. Relationship culture, that's a relationship's cognitive rules, understanding, and meaning. Uh, Intraspecific processes. One or both partners in a relationship think about problems in the relationship or with their partner. Um, Didactic process. The beginning of the ending of a relationship. A partner quits following their relationship's rules. Social support processes. It's whenever a uh, relationship starts to melt down, people go around telling their problems to other people. <coughs> Break dressing process. It's when one partner or both partners tell others about the relationship problems. It's more, it's more than the last uh, so. <coughs> Now we're talking about uh, morality. Uh, the equity theory states that people in a relationship are happier when they feel like their partner puts in the same amount of effort as them and it's not higher ranking. Like, for example, this would be chores. Um, psychological responsibility. This is remembering, planning, coordinating domestic activities. Women do more of this. Um, some examples of this would be taking kids to places. And now, uh, the book does not really talk about morality, so in a minute, I'm going to be sharing some Bible verses that also talk about it. Um, 
book says to avoid partner violence. I think that's kind of obvious. Uh, it happens when the partner is physically abused. It does not happen in most relationships. And again, start in dating or have any kind of life. Um, this is the example from the book. Um, it talk, has a whole section about AIDS. And example of I and you language. Now some Bible verses talking about uh, sexual immorality. Genesis 1, 28 says, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on earth. In Matthew 5, 28, Jesus says, But I say to you, that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. First Corinthians 6, 18 through 19 says, Flee from sexual immorality. For every person, for every other sin, a person commits it's outside the body, but sexual immorality, or, but the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom <coughs> you have from God? You are not your own. First Thessalonians 1, 3 through 4 says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. And that's the works I page. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marina Paul. Now, are you going to take us through the activity too yes. or discussion? So, okay. Are yeah. you okay? Can you do both? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, so our activity, um, there were like three parts to it, and so the first part was identifying four of the six different stages of friendships and giving examples. Jacob, what did you put with this I put friendly, friendly relations, and I had an example of talking to someone to see if you have common interest. Good job. Um, Megan, did you have one? Yeah, I put, <laughs> that's okay, I put, uh, role limited interactions, so like, kind of like, if you meet someone at a job, like for the first time, and you guys like start to like talk and stuff. Good job. Um, <laughs> so there's a couple more, but I mean, it could have been six. It seems like you guys got the gist of it. Uh, the second part: What are the two aspects of personal relationships? Either one. There are more than two, right? Yeah, there's just two. There, I, there at least two. Well, I wrote down. Uh, Relationship dialects. <coughs> okay, yeah, that's good. Because the dialectics are important, and like Jesse had the part with um, talking about like how to like fix them or yeah, approach the approaches. Yeah. yeah. All right. What about you, Megan? I put uniqueness, like how personal relationship personal relationships are unique, and I talked about commitment too. Yeah. Like where you decide to like remain with a relationship or not. <coughs> Okay, name and explain two, oh yeah, this is what I was talking about, two dialectic solutions for solving tensions. Jacob, do you have one? Uh, I wrote down neutralization, which is like finding a middle ground between. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could okay, apply yeah. the idea of win-win situation. Neutral ground might also yeah. be considered win-win or unfortunately lose-lose yeah. or ever equal right. situation. Mm -hmm. What about you, Oh, dang, I put like the actual, like the dialect of like the solutions, but I did like openness and closeness. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did those kind of stuff, but uh, yeah, I did that in like the desire for openness and tension, but also a desire for privacy. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you very much, presenters. Yay! Good job. And.